Now, don't get me wrong, I love video games. I've loved video games since I was four or five years old, whether it was Banjo-Kazooie, Donkey Kong, Mario, whatever the case. But lately, I can't help but escape the feeling that video games just lack their luster. Maybe I'm getting old. Maybe the responsibilities of real life are weighing down on me, and the time that I do have to play games, I just can't get as immersed as I used to. Maybe it's the microtransactions, the manipulative systems going on in the background. Maybe you feel the same way. Maybe you think I'm just totally wrong. I'm tripping. Games are better than they ever were. And I'm just not playing the right stuff. I know I used to play a lot of Call of Duty, a lot of first person shooters, a lot of PvP styled games. And I can't help but escape the fact that whether it's the server connection, lag, packet loss, packet burst, desync, all these other things, or whether it's manipulative systems going on in the background, whether it's engagement optimized matchmaking, certain patents, especially in Call of Duty, which is one of my favorite games, things just don't seem the same. Part of it, I think, is due to the fact that games have become more of a business than they ever were, whether it's the microtransactions within the games, whether it's the rising prices of the games, despite the fact that the people who are making the games don't seem to care as much about it. I'm sure the developers care, the publishers seem like they don't care. It's just become a business to whore out and make money off of. I notice this a lot with games that are supposed to be rated M for mature, which is 17 and up, but clearly the marketing, the in-game microtransactions and everything is catered towards young kids that are going to use their parents' credit cards in order to buy these microtransactions. And it's it's kind of blatantly obvious by the way that they obfuscate the different in-game currencies. You know, the game has, you pay cash for this thing and then you got to use that thing to buy the thing to distract you from the fact that you spent $20 for this thing, but you got to spend $5 more for the extra currency in order to buy the thing that you need, rather than them just putting a price tag on it up front and being you know, less deceitful. So there's that to think about. There's the fact that in this day and age, people vote with their wallets. People show the companies what's going to be successful and what's not. I think over the past 10 years or so with this whole streaming and this new generation of internet technology, I think that gaming has shifted the business model as well. I think there's going to be more and more free to play games coming up. I think there's going to be more and more games that are plagued by cheaters. And I think that there's going to be a lot of issues that are going to have to be overcome to get gaming back in a better place. That's not to say there's not a lot of good games like Baldur's Gate or like other games that have come out this year that I still have yet to play, even Elden Ring. I just haven't really felt like playing them. The only thing that I really have fun with lately on games, honestly, is occasionally playing Diablo, hopefully getting some good RNG, and then playing Call of Duty with friends. I can play it occasionally if I'm bored by myself, but at a certain point, it just kind of feels empty and pointless. And maybe you feel the same way, I don't know. I just wanted to express this. All right, so we can look at this revenue chart from 1995 where they made 40 million and then look 2022 they made 7 billion which was actually down from 2021 i think those previous two years because of covid and everything they got a little boost because everybody was at home and had more time on their hands and then afterwards the financial effects kind of hit everybody harder inflation increased gas prices milk being five dollars a gallon all this other stuff, you know, you might as well put milk in your gas tank at that point. But if you look at all of this, basically it shows that they've found a way to become more and more profitable over the years. And I think that's by cutting costs because a lot of these business people, they look, what can we take away in order for us to earn more? And a lot of times that's at the expense of the player. Then you can look at other things like this right here. This is just showing you know, since the beginning of video games, 1972, up to now, and you see how much bigger mobile gaming is than PC. Surprisingly, PC is bigger than console. That's only because China's big, China's literally carrying the rest of the world with PC. 
because I would argue consoles bigger in the United States, probably Canada as well, probably even Europe, and then PCs probably bigger in China than console is. I would go out on a limb to make that assumption. Let me know if you think I'm wrong, though. But just looking at all this, you can see the growth the mobile has had and then the effect that it's had on all the other games, whether that's microtransactions, whether that's free to play, different business models that have changed. Some of them are in the interest of the player. Some of them actually have kind of screwed us over and shortchanged us a little bit. Let me know what you think, though, and let me know what some of your favorite games to play recently are. Anyways, I hope everybody's having a great holiday season, and I'll catch you soon. Thank you for stopping by.